Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Brad with Fine Tune, and today we are showing you guys how to check your timing chains on your BMW N57 diesel. Negative 2.1, so I would say they replace all these parts on the table. So this is a February of 2014 BMW F15 with the N57 diesel in it and this vehicle has some terrible timing chain rattle on it. It sounds very low -key. It has 184,000 miles on it and we're just going to show you guys how to check your timing chain via Pro Tool on your phone or tablet or whatever you have and then we'll also show you what this sounds like because it sounds absolutely terrible. And hopefully it'll help you guys at home decide maybe whether you want to buy an N57 diesel or whether you want to tackle this timing chain job or maybe even help you diagnose your vehicle. So we are in the vehicle and I'm going to show you guys what Pro Tool is kind of and uh, what it does. So we're turning on the key of this vehicle. We, I have a Bluetooth dongle so I'll hit connect on this. And basically it'll just go through all the control units, identify them and populate them in Pro Tool. So it's finishing up right now. And now we are live in Pro Tool. So these are all the different um, modules inside the vehicle. What we're concerned about is the engine computer. And we will go into live data here and we'll go to raw data. So it's gathering all the feed of this raw data. And what I want to search for is cam shaft. So we'll do that and we want to see the offset angle for the camshaft and we'll hit confirm. So right now it's at zero degrees and we'll start up the engine right now and we'll see what it's at. This vehicle has a very bad timing chain so it's going to be a very bad value for us. So we'll start up the engine right now. So as you can see on the screen, it's showing negative 2.1 degrees. So We'll actually get out of the vehicle right now and um, I'll put my mic on the engine for you guys and you could have a listen for it yourself. It sounds very low beat, kind of like it has a dam in this car. So this is exactly what a stretch timing chain sounds like on your BMW diesel. And I'll put the mic down below too, that way you can hear what the underneath side of it sounds like too. It has a very rhythmic tone to it. So, yeah, this is no good. So this is a bad timing chain. It's not snapped yet, which is a good thing. We caught it just in time for this vehicle. Like I said, it has 184,000 miles on it. Now, let me show you guys what a good timing chain sounds like and what a good value is for this camshaft offset. So this vehicle is a 10 of 2013, and yeah, it had a little deer hit on the front, but this has 175,000 miles on this thing, and the timing chains are perfect on it. Throw in Pro Tool on this vehicle, and we'll start it up, and we'll see what the timing chain degrees look like on this vehicle. All right, so I'm about to connect to this 535D with Pro Tool, and we're connecting to the vehicle right now. Establishing connection. All right, we're identifying control units on this vehicle. We're finishing up and we're connected. So on this one, I'll go to the live data again. We'll go to raw. And this offset of this timing chain is negative 0.5 degrees. I would say that's perfectly in spec. However, a negative 2.1 on that F15, definitely not in spec, and the, tame, the chain is definitely stretched on this one. So that's this 535D, and this has 175,000 miles on it. We'll walk over here to this F15 here. This one has 122,000 miles, so way less than this vehicle, and definitely way less than that vehicle. 
This one currently has a snapped timing chain on it. This one does not run whatsoever. Um, how you can tell it has a snap chime, chime, timing chain on it is the camshafts don't spinny spinny along with the crank. And that's a no bueno on this one. So um, if we hop in this vehicle, this one doesn't start up. Crankshaft spinning, the cams are not spinning. We won't have complete combustion to start this. And along with this one, how you can tell that these have a snap timing chain is they'll throw a camshaft fault code. So if you have a camshaft fault code and not running F15 or an N57, then you definitely have a snap chain. And when that happens, it's not a good day. Um, it bends the valves. It usually ruins the lifters in the uh, underneath the valve cover, and uh, it takes out the cams with it too. So. In order to fix this vehicle, you have to replace the whole head with new cams and you have to put new timing chains on it as well. So um, this isn't a good day for this vehicle. It either needs a new engine or a new head on it. And yeah, it's mine. I'll fix it when I have time. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you the difference in everything. Uh, it really boils down to what, what engine oil you're running in it, your oil service on the vehicle, um, is auto start stop turned on, on, on or off? Because that'll definitely stretch the, the chain out. And um, it boils down to the chain itself. They're a lot smaller than the M57, the previous generation. So, I mean, it's just kind of a weak chain as is. But uh, yeah, our next step for this vehicle in the shop is we'll actually drop the engine out of it. Um, the timing chains are in the back of the engine so that that makes some complications there because you have to drop the engine, you have to disassemble the transmission, and then you can finally get to the timing cover. And you have to pull that out and basically replace all these parts on the table. And just rough figures right here, all these parts are around like $2,500. And then you add labor on top of that, which isn't cheap, probably around six k So you have $8,000 in vehicle repairs on your vehicle. So... Um, some people do it for preventative maintenance, others do it because they need to, like this one. Um, but basically, you just don't want to end up with a snap timing chain like the vehicle outside. So unfortunately, we didn't take any video of this whole process here, but here's just a picture of the engine dropped out of the vehicle. And then in order to get to the timing chains, we actually have to separate the transmission from the engine. So here we have it on the forklift here. And then uh, the next picture here is just showing our timing chain tool and it's not flush with the cylinder head. So this yet again tells us that the timing chain is definitely stretched. Here is a short little video of the chain itself, the upper timing chain. And you can see how much play it has on that cam gear. And I haven't even taken out the chain tensioner whatsoever on this. So that just goes to show you how stretched these things get. Here we have all the old timing chain stuff laid out on the table. We do new guides, we do the upper chain, the lower chain, and even the chain that goes on the oil pump. And you know, all the gears get replaced as well, the high pressure fuel pump gear and the cam gear. Um, a lot of times people will only do the upper chain and that's not really the right way to do it. I just, if we're in there, we do everything all at once and be done with it. So here's all the new chains on the engine. Everything is torqued down to spec. Um, everything's clean, nice, neat, and tidy. And then here's just a little video of our timing tool again. And it's sitting flush with the cylinder head, which is exactly what we like to see. This means that everything's in time and it's ready to go back and in the engine. So um, our next video here, this is actually what it sounds like um, with the new fresh chains in there. And yes, the engine bay is all dirty, but um, we'll get that cleaned up once everything's all back in, the engine covers on. and. Um, we do our test drive and inspection and make sure there's no leaks or anything going on. So this is the old noise. And then here is the new noise of the engine. So definitely not rattling whatsoever, which is exactly what we want. And finally, here's a screenshot of the camshaft value after we did all the new timing chains. It is 0.1 degrees, which is way better than that negative 2.1 degrees. Um, from the previous stretch chains. Yeah, we got the customer's vehicle all cleaned up and uh, we put his summer wheels on, which look very nice as well. And then we cleaned up the engine bay and um, 
know, everything's nice and neat for this customer and he's all happy and uh, it's back on the road, delivered to them. And he's going to probably put another 180,000 miles on this car. He loves it. Thanks for watching, guys. We have some more videos in the pipeline, so stick around.